I think it can, but not right away. Not right away. I think we have to get through some of these important levels, and it's going to take a major catalyst for us to break through some of those important levels, this $2,800 level, $2,800 level. I wouldn't be surprised to see, you know, some breakdown to the 200-day moving average, but that's only, that's only 50 uh, S&P points from here. But after that, I think we can move higher on strong fundamentals. Okay, that's interesting. Jenny, do you think we've gone as far as we can go without another big catalyst? No, I think we could go a little bit further, but obviously not at the same pace that we're at. If we kept up this pace, the market would be up 72% year to date. So I think <laughs> um, I think we need to... Right, it's been a blistering yeah, blistering. that we've had it's since um, that low of uh, Christmas Eve. Yeah, so I think we can bump along or we could plateau, but I don't think we need to go down. Okay, so Jimmy, what has to happen to get, to get us to that next level? Maybe to get you know firmly over 28, maybe to hit new all-time highs? What needs to fall into place? Is, is it the obvious? The trade, trade you know, that's, you know, that, that's in the market now. I think that's mostly in the market. But to answer your question, your first question, what does it take? Probably takes a little bit of time, not a lot of time, but a little bit of time, a week or two here. And on the trade front, Scott, you know what could happen here is you get one nasty tweet just to move things along from President Trump. Market could come off two or three percent. I'll bet that gets met with, met with a buy the dip mentality because that's where investor sentiment is right now. That's the sort of trajectory I would like to see. Get a little step back here, and that sets it up for the next leg forward. But absent that, I think you got to wait a week or two to let things uh, settle in as far as what this trade deal looks like and then maybe move higher from there. Okay. Josh, how do you see it? Um, I don't know what the trade deal looks like. I, I'm just focused on price right now and internals. And as I mentioned yesterday, um, and I want to put a finer point on it, the most impressive thing happening in this comeback that we've had since uh, uh, Christmas Eve is just the, the sheer breadth of the rally. And when you take a look at... Um, you know, the, the FANG names and NVIDIA doing absolutely nothing. When was the last time you saw Amazon moving sideways in a channel like this while the overall market ripped higher? So a good or a bad thing? I, I, I no, can see so both sides of that it's argument. Fantastic. No, it's fantastic. It's great. Mm -hmm. there's, no, there's, no, there's nothing negative about it. And the reason why is because so mu the, the, the big bearish canard for so long has been the whole rally has been driven by these five stocks right. or these seven stocks or mm -hmm. this one sector. Take a look at XBI and IBB right now. Biotechnology breaking out, legit, on its own, has absolutely nothing to do with Amazon or, or, or semiconductors or any of that. It's its own story, and these stocks are working their way higher. Take a look at the financials, now back to the highest level since they were vomited up in early December. These are significant levels and breakouts for sectors beyond the fang. So mm -hmm. I think that's important, Scott. Um, now, momentum seems to be slowing down a bit. As we approach 2,800, which is the prior high, makes perfect sense that momentum w might want to yeah, take a pause here. Yeah, that's the line of the sand for uh, sure. And, and look, that, that's okay. Small caps are 9% above the prior highs. Large caps are 5%. There's still room here, and I love the breadth. Okay, all great points, but at some point, don't you need the heavy hitters? Don't you need the big home run hitters? To no, get back. <clears throat> I think there's enough dispersion in the marketplace right now. And by that, that, I mean the fangs, obviously. I, well, but, but let's focus on, on the big four. It's, it's the big four more, that take up $3.2 trillion of market cap, the, the, the alphabet, the Amazon, right. the Microsoft. So well, let's focus on that. But I think there is, <clears throat> to Josh's point, enough dispersion in the mm -hmm. marketplace that this market can extend higher. Now, you're coming into a period where what is going to matter is what are the earnings revisions, <clears throat> excuse me, going to look like? What are those earnings revisions going to look like? I think that's going to be important. I'll so tell you, you, tell you, you got new fangs, though. Got new fangs. Is Cisco? Nobody was talking about Cisco two years ago. Nobody cared if it went up or down. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it's like, this guy what, is not paying right. attention. Trying to, try to, try to have a meltdown but here. I'm mentioning a stock that. I mean, eventually, if you've got. Microsoft is not in the original fangs. Let me just make no, this the, point. Say, you got new nine, stocks leading. It's okay. You. It's okay. The five through nine hitters, <laughs> they've been doing great, okay? They've carried the market. Don't at some point, though, you need your leadoff guys and the, Why do you need the it? cleanup hitter to in start? In 2013... Knocking them out of the park? In 2013, the biggest stock in the world went, was, was negative. Apple did not work. The whole market had an amazing year. Small caps were up 40%. You don't you need it for what? For posterity? Because it looks that, good? If you, if you think the market can take another leg higher, can you continue to go up did. without the big it fan just, names? It just I understand did. that, but then what? Now so, what? Uh, so I think what's more important than those names, yes, they, they may participate, they may not. But the structure of the market is such that investors are buying stocks. There's an appetite for stocks. You see it in the last hour of trading every day. We are finally trading differently. We're trading trading up in the last hour. So there's this demand out there for stocks. So I think any any pullback, any grinding lower because of technicals 
is going to be met by buying because the fundamentalists are back. They came back at year mm -hmm. end. They're back.